Good morning. How's that volume okay now? Uh, welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Once again, we're doing it by video and not live. Just think it's in the best interest of not spreading the, the virus. And so I do want to welcome you to our Ash Wednesday service. And uh, we will begin that service by singing our opening hymn. It's come to Calvary's holy mountain. As always, we begin in that most precious name. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The traditional Ash Wednesday reading is found in Genesis chapter 3. Um, if you remember, after God created Adam and Eve in this whole world, and then Eve first, and then Adam sinned. God confronted Adam, and we read these words. And to Adam, God said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, that you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These words that our Lord spoke to Adam... describe the consequences of our sin, describe the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin, and it describes the consequences of our sin. God says the wages of sin is death. We probably have all heard out at the cemetery when we're 
burying a loved one. We've heard the pastor say those words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It reminds us when we hear those words that no matter how old we are, no matter how long we've lived, no matter what we've accomplished in our life, no matter how much money we have, no matter what we've done, because of our sinfulness, we all end up in the same place. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's uh, very humbling, isn't it? To think that our end is simply we rot we rot into just a little pile of dust, I'm told. The reason we begin the Lenten services with this theme is the purpose of Lent is to prepare us to celebrate Holy Week and especially Easter Sunday morning. For my dear friends, remember when the pastor at the graveyard says as he commits the body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, he also goes on to say, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Yes, Ash Wednesday and all of Lent is followed by Good Friday and Easter. Yes, because of our sin, we die. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ and his gracious mercy, we live. With that introduction, let's sing our sermon hymn. It's Rock of Ages. And I invite you to look carefully at the words. We're going to do that in our sermon message today. So let's sing that familiar hymn, Rock of Ages. For our sermon message today, I've chosen not to look at a particular verse of Scripture, 
but rather to use as our sermon text the hymn that we just sang, Rock of Ages, Clef for Me. I've done this before in congregations for Lenten services, and uh, they've, uh, they've worked really well for us to really get into the, give us a chance to get real insight into the, into the gospel message. This hymn, Rock of Ages, was written by August, Augustus Top Lady, and the tune was from Thomas Hastings way back in the, like the 18th century or maybe the 17th century or 19th century. Um, verse 1. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Uh, it's not unusual in, in our hymns to, that the hymn writers um, use some words that, that uh, uh, maybe from the old English, and, and we, have that, we have a couple of those words here in this hymn. Um, Augustus Top Lady was, uh, was a, obviously a good wordsmith and able to put together words for hymns. And obviously, and they understood how to put words together in beautiful lyrics that, that really touch our hearts. But let me tell you, good hymn writers are also good theologians. And that's what we see here in this hymn. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. The word cleft, and I did look it up in the dictionary to make sure, simply means an opening caused by by being split okay it's a word related words are cleaver and uh, uh, cleave so rock of ages cleft split for me obviously we've got to ask who is the rock of ages think we know it's a term for our for our God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now the the title rock of ages is never used in the Bible to describe Jesus or or God um, but the hymn writer chooses this title for Jesus and it's also appropriate rock of ages split cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. What the hymn writer is doing is directing us to Exodus 33, starting with verse 18. During the Exodus journey, the, Moses had led the people out of Egypt to, the, to Mount Sinai. They'd been there a year, prepared now to go on. And Moses, up on the top of Mount Sinai, says to God, Lord, you've got to go with us. If you don't go with us, we won't make it. And God says, I'm going with you. And then Moses says, but I want a sign of assurance. I want to see your face, God. And that's where our text picks up. If you have your Bible, open to Exodus 33, starting with verse 18. And Moses said, Please show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will pro proclaim before you my name, Yahweh, or Lord. But, Moses, you cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Behold, there is a place where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. So God says to Moses, okay, I'll, I'll show you myself my glory, but not directly. And the reason is because if Moses, as a sinner, would come face to face with God, 
the glory of God would destroy Moses, for sinful man cannot stand in the presence of an all-holy God. And so God tells Moses to get down in a split in the rock. And then God walks by him and covers Moses' face with his hands and walks by Moses and says, Yahweh, Yahweh, I am, I am. Lord, Lord, it's translated. Now back to verse 1 of our hymn. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. The hymn writer, picking up on the, uh, on the words of Moses, now says, not to God up on Mount Sinai, but to Jesus Christ, who is the rock of ages. The rock of ages who was cleft for him. The hymn writer prays, and we sang the prayer. Hide my, let me hide myself in thee. Here's the picture. So that we won't be destroyed by the glory of God in our sinfulness, we are, through faith in Jesus, covered by Jesus. Wow. But then the hymn writer goes on to describe exactly the same thing in totally different with totally different theological imagery let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure cleanse me from its guilt and power let the water and the blood from thy riven <laughs> riven is sort of like cleft <laughs> split an opening torn apart And when was Jesus torn apart, split, so that water and blood came from him? It's in John chapter 19, verse 34, that we are told that when they wanted to take down the body of Jesus to assure that he was already dead, that Roman guard stuck a spear in his side and John tells us that out of his side came water and blood. Now, my friend, for years, I said, why in the world did God tell us that water and blood came out of his side? What's the big deal? A number of years ago, my wife and I were in Houston spending a couple of days away from, away from home, and there was an art exhibit. And the art exhibit was entitled The Body of Christ, and it was, it was uh, paintings of the body of Christ painted by a famous 18th, 17th century artist. I don't remember all of them. But one of those paintings was of Jesus hanging on the cross, lifeless, right after the guard had stuck his spear in Jesus' side, and out of Jesus' side came two streams of liquid, one water and one blood. And guess who was standing right below the crucifix? It was Mary and the disciples. The water and the blood were coming down and covering the people of God. And what is the water? that covers the people of God, that atones for our sins, the water of baptism. And what is the blood that covers the people of God and atones for our sins? It is the blood of Jesus Christ that we receive in Holy Communion. You see, my friends, that artist was a great theologian. He understood the theology that the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin, the double cure cleanse me from his guilt and power. We move to verse 2. It's our, our prayer is continuing here in the words of verse 2. Not the labors of my hands 
can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone, rock of ages. You see what we are saying here when we sing this second verse is there's nothing we can do to atone for our sins. No, we are spiritually blind, dead, and enemies of God. And there is nothing we can do. There is no thing, no matter how great it might appear, that will make us right so we can be at one with God. And so, thou must save. We say, Rock of Ages, thou must save, and thou alone. Verse 3. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul, sin corrupted, rotten, stinking, foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. We go to the fountain especially pictured in the waters of holy baptism that washes all of our sins away and makes us clean and right before God as his Holy Spirit comes in to fill our hearts. Now when God looks at us, because we've been washed clean by the, by the water and word of holy baptism, now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sinfulness but rather he sees his holy child. Verse 4, While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyelids close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Yes, throughout our life, and yes, even as we are dying, we say, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. This is this amazing good news that our Heavenly Father, the Almighty Judge of the world, really does forgive us all of our sins simply through faith in Jesus. And through faith in Jesus, we are covered by the rock, the rock of ages. We are covered by his holiness, his righteousness. And so, in this hymn, we are pleading with God. This is not just a, a prayer. I picture this hymn as us on our knees pleading with God that he would graciously forgive us, that the rock of ages, Jesus Christ, who was cleft for me, would hide us so that we might, so that we might be that forgiven child of God and spend eternity in heaven. I'd like for us now to sing the hymn and hopefully with a little more understanding.
We pray. This morning we, we pray to the rock of ages, to Jesus Christ. It's in him we live and move and have our being. In him we hide. And we are, when we are covered by the righteousness of the rock of ages, our God looks at us and smiles and says, My beloved child, your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for being so gracious. Forgive us for all the times that we begin to think, to imagine that somehow or another we can contribute to our salvation. Imagining that our good deeds or our going to church or our caring about somebody else, that you would Take that into consideration. No, Lord, what we ask is that you simply wash us in the fountain, the fountain of your blood and your water, in the waters of holy baptism, in the blood of holy communion, that you wash us and fill us anew with your spirit so that we might go forth filled with love to be your people. As we go through the Lenten season, Continue to open our eyes to how desperately we need your grace so that come Good Friday and Easter, when we look at the cross, when we look at the empty tomb, we'll just sing the, your praises that you would love us that much. We do pray for your church. We pray for we're all in this cold weather that you would take care of us. We pray for all those who are experiencing the COVID virus. And we lift up to you, Frida, and all the people that are affected by the virus. Lord, in your mercy, please, please take care of them. And in your mercy, be gracious to us and stop the virus. Again, just... Thank you for being so gracious. The rock of ages, the God of gods and the Lord of lords. And now we pray together that prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now together confess our sins to God our Father and to one another, most appropriate for Ash Wednesday. Please join with me, most merciful Father. We confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now receive the benediction of the Lord. Now having confessed your sins and your unworthiness and heard the marvelous good news that through your faith in Jesus all your sins, every single one of them, are forgiven, are forgiven by the Almighty God. Go now in peace, for the Lord is blessing you and keeping you. The Lord has is shining His face on you, and He is gracious to you. The Lord is looking upon you with His favor, and He is giving you His peace. Amen and amen. And now we close by singing, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be. a couple of
comments. Um, the uh, the burlap stole. We didn't think it's appropriate that we uh, that we could uh, use ashes, which is more typical on Ash Wednesday, and so we came up with the idea of, of using sackcloth, which was one of the customs in the Old Testament, especially for repentance and for sorrow, and so uh, we we have the we have the sackcloth, the the burlap stole. Um, typically, we have Lenten services on. Uh, on Wednesdays from 10 to 11. And uh, therefore, tomorrow, we're recording this on Tuesday, but tomorrow, right after the service at 11 o'clock, between after the service, which will end about 10.45 or so, and between 10.45 and 12 noon, that is on Wednesday, we will be serving drive-by communion. And... Uh, we invite you to, to come by to, to experience once again that, that sacramental presence uh, of Jesus and to, to experience his, his, uh, his, his, the water and the blood coming down from the cross to clean you out and uh, purify you. So, with those two notes, our service is now concluded. As always, hang on to Jesus for dear life.